Welcome to Dr. Gardner's seminar, a master's level class in which we watch vlogs from a fictional character. I mean, talk about hypermediation in new media. If you'd like to support this fictional graduate seminar, check out the Patreon where I actually do a bunch of educational stuff. And I would be happy to give you an honorary degree in Lizzie Bennett fandom. My name's Ashley Clements, and these are the Look Back Diaries Fabulogs. And look, I only made you wait one week between bonus episodes. At the time, they made people wait two weeks, which I thought was dumb. It wasn't the original plan. It was like, decided after we had filmed them. And, you know, obviously the idea was to like tease things out and also like spread out the promotion. So the first episode aired on May 22nd. The second one aired on June 10th. I just didn't really feel like there was enough to be all that suspenseful about. But I mean, people were were very excited to see Lizzie and Darcy together specifically. And I do really hope that it felt like a fun treat for the audience. That's definitely something that like you know, I know that like Kate, who wrote the episodes and, and DVG and I were aware of that, like, yes, we were here doing essentially a commercial, but trying to do it in world and in a way that still felt like an episode of the thing that you loved. And, you know, the comments from from the last episode did seem to imply that that many people were happy to see Lizzie and Darcy back on the screen again. But there was something for me about like that extra week getting added in there that felt very just like, this is a book promo. <laughs> I think in world, Lizzie explained it on her Twitter as being like, because of something going on with Dr. Gardner's seminar specifically that they had to like do a test or wait, let's look it up. Elno has not yet deleted the Twitter accounts of inactive accounts, so we can still check. At the Lizzie Bennett. You know what? I also did not take us through the little, you know, Twitter essay about Lizzie helping her parents move out of their home. So let's let's just take a look at all of it. So we've already covered uh, this, March 29th, 2013, and then a year later, <laughs> suddenly Lizzie is just tweeting again. Don't ask questions. Looking forward to an exciting week celebrating Best DP Day with At the Charlotte Lou, among other things. And then, of course, like you, things were threaded differently. So here she's I, like, I have no idea what she's responding to. And it, it's just not even worth it to me to try to track that down. I'm sorry. If you want to, good luck. Okay, just got a very weird call all the same day. So apparently my parents sold our house and we have to have everything out of it this week. And I mean everything. It's so weird that these are not threaded. It was a different time. So it looks like I'm heading home tomorrow to move all my leftover stuff out of my childhood home. Hashtag not going to be fun. I, I'm not going to click on that hashtag. Who's hashtagging that? And wow, wait, that was March 11th. This is March 10th. I don't know. March 12th on the way home. Still March 12th. Uh, weird to think this is the last time I'll be making the drive home. To where, Lizzie? We don't know. <laughs> Somewhere drivable from San Francisco, which means anywhere in California. I'm home. Well, I guess it's not really home anymore, is it? I guess it still is home since the minute I walk through the door, I get in an argument with my mother. I know, my mother being unreasonable. Shocking. But I grew up in this house, and so many important things have happened to me here, to all of us. And then here's the first photo, which is someone's garage. We filmed this at, like, someone's house, kind of in, like, the middle of LA. And I believe that they were chosen because they were, I think they were like somebody that Bernie knew, but in because they had a garage <laughs> full of boxes. Um, I don't remember having this much stuff. Is, is that supposed to all be yours? That seems excessive. Somebody asked, where are you going to store all this stuff? I don't know. Brownie face. Someone else asked, it's almost like you've been collecting stuff for over 200 years. It sure seems that way. Hmm, ha ha. It's a Jane Austen reference. Cute. Someone else asked the Lydia Bennett, are you not in the same house right now? No, 
why is that, Lydia? Then, yes, I had to pose with the stuff. I was definitely tasked with bringing a few different outfits because, you know, these are pieces I wore on the show and supposed to be sort of like things I might wear while I was getting dusty and dirty. What to do? Ugh. I've been at this all day and barely made a dent. Somebody else asked, is Lydia helping you? Speaking of which, at the Lydia Bennett, where the heck are you? So I did manage to make some progress with the Lydia Bennett's help. Uh, Charlotte asked, you guys are keeping the hat, right? As if I could ever get rid of it. Hashtag feels. So many memories. Again, we're just in someone else's garage with boxes. And that's another shirt I wore on the show. And I'm just showing the, the Darcy stuff and cute 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 and this is a photo mary kate obviously provided great now the cat is judging me cats judge every human yeah that's true maybe she wouldn't if you were actively packing i'm not so sure about that again mary kate provided the photo from her own apartment judgy mcjudgers and face ha back to work thank you for appearing again rosie look how green her eyes are pretty kitty oh they really got into fan interaction here didn't they i don't think you guys are going to finish in time if we keep on going like this thanks for the reminder this has been days March. i mean like we did this all week uh never sleep in public lizzie but it's our house but like that i'm guessing lydia posted a photo of lizzie sleeping i don't know Things aren't threaded and it's too hard to find them all. So no, just a few boxes done. So much left. Charlotte Lou, seriously, not helping. God, the whole like quote, it's like exhausting. Okay, that's it. This is ridiculous. Time to streamline. I agree. Can we do that on Twitter too? Um, that's not even my plaid. Like, is that? Oh, maybe that's, maybe that's the robe. Maybe that's the robe. Uh, I think that's supposed to be the diary and other things that you recognize. Just taking a few boxes like this one, obviously. And then we took some photos together, going to Carter's, happy pre-birthday. And now we're just inside the house of the people with the messy garage. This is a very like homemade looking cupcake. Could not tell you how, how that came into being. How's your day going so far? Did the earthquake wake you up? Only because it scared the kitty Bennett. My cat was never scared of an earthquake, ever. Completely unfazed, so I don't know. How do your cats respond to earthquakes? Comment below. This is what I care about. <laughs> they really stretched this out. Um, obviously we're promoting another show here. Just got a postcard from Gigi Darcy at Sanditon. Happy birthday, hope you're having fun at home. I know William is probably all mopey without you. I miss you, so come visit soon. Uh, then it's our birthday. Happy birthday to best bestie, the Charlotte Lou. Thanks for the B-Day wishes, time to head back to San Francisco, letting go of the life I had and embracing the life ahead. And another little photo of us on this lawn. Lady Ben and I say goodbye to our home. Hashtag waves. Hashtag thank you. Uh-huh. And then you do two months later, <laughs> going from March to May here. But this was, I believe, all done as a lead up to promoting the book. And then like we changed outfits again. I just brought a lot of like things I had worn as Lizzie Bennett, obviously. And the photo I've previously shown, Ashley inserted here of Mary Kate and I with a copy of the book was taken on this same lawn, just right here, same day, same everything. Okay, so then we get to, I shot a video for Dr. Gardner's seminar class. Here it is. I feel like that tweet does not like, do enough to say like, there's a new episode and y'all should be freaking out. Then about a week later, okay, everyone, yes, there will be another video. So this is the day it should have been posted, right? But Dr. Gardner won't let me release it until all her students finish their seminar project, evil, but effective. And then I guess Maria was the one to tell me it was all done. Great, now where did I put it? How do you lose digital files, Lizzie? Found it, I found my lost digital file, which has clearly already been uploaded to YouTube. Here's my second video for Dr. Gardner's seminar class with William Darcy. And that's the last that Lizzie ever tweeted. Lots of content for you today. Okay, so let's watch the episode and then I'll tell you more things. Now we're here. Yes, it's for school, even though I graduated. Oh, excellent point, Darcy. You and I made the same same snarky joke, which, you, you know, Kate, Kate made. <laughs> which means a lot to us. They really did make me 
cards with the questions, as as I recall, um, which is you know, obviously helpful. Besides, without Dr. Gardner, we might not have overcome our differences and gotten together. Yeah, that's right. Show a little love to Dr. Gardner. My name is Susie Bennett. This is William Darcy. And Susie Bennett. The cre the subtitles say Hi. fantastic. No, that's the joke. Lizzie was never good at the intros. Cute. What is it like being in a relationship with another CEO? How do you balance work life mm. and life? Yeah, great question. Carefully. <laughs> Our business is different. Uh, Cambly is based more around app development, and Lizzie's company is focused on finding and fostering new online talent. Well, I guess that's personally more specific than in our lives to understand the nuances of this industry makes it easier to communicate to each other and since communication yeah i agree there's a lot of advice out there that says actors shouldn't date actors and for financial security that has uh some <clears throat> validity but uh in terms of like somebody understanding your weird hours and dropping everything in a second for an audition yes Oh, AI issues, you say? Maybe it shouldn't run the world? Hmm, wow, this was a decade ago. I mean, this was nine years ago. Like, that's, that's, uh, no. <laughs> I like the implication that, like, maybe it's a sex thing. <laughs> Am I the only one getting that? <laughs> I mean, I have to say yet. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember just knowing as an actor that I had to like look very moony eyed at him. Now, this is obviously the book tease. I mean, a little silly of me to even have played like, but do you like me now? When obviously they do. Like, Lizzie's spelled wrong. It's just, it wouldn't have been that much work to fix these subtitles, I say, as a person who does not fix my own subtitles. So, you know what? I get it. Oh, what? In fact. It's, it's, um, where is it? It's actually, if you've never seen the physical book, you won't be able to see this either, but it looks like it's taped in with like washi tape. It's cute. Last question. Last question. Uh, hmm. Well, maybe you could have Googled me and. Or like, you know, not made the videos in the first place, but and maybe I mean, obviously, I don't regret that Lizzie made them and neither does Lizzie because maybe. everything worked out and she wouldn't have her little company, whatever exactly it does now, fostering talent. <laughs> Oh, so cute. And then you want to make out, but instead you realize you can turn off the camera before you make out. I hope that you are learning something in Dr. Gardner's class and that you learned something. Learning about shipping. Although I can't imagine what. I appreciate that, Kate. Just acknowledging like, I didn't tell you anything useful except also, mm, so cute. Yes, moony eyes, moony eyes. See you around. Mmm. Yeah. And at this point, I really did not know if I would ever be asked to be Lizzie Bennett again. And I wasn't. <laughs>
So the other thing that I was going to share uh, is about payment. I was paid eight hundred dollars to do this, and that made me very mad. And that's like partly because of a misunderstanding with my manager. Like it's not entirely their fault, except of course, also like that is what they offered me and paid me. So it's, you know, like their fault as well. But I had changed managers at this point. And when they contacted us about this, my manager reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, I heard from Jenny, we're you know, they, they want you to come back and shoot these two episodes. And I was like, fantastic. We have already established my day rate for being Lizzie Bennett in an episode of the Lizzie Bennett Diaries. That is $1,200 a day. I'm not going back for less than that. My rate is $1,200 a day. And he said, great, I'll go back to you. And then he came back and said, okay, it's $800 for a half day. And I was like, what? I told you I'm not going back to set as Lizzie Bennett for less than $1,200. Because at this point, all the things had happened with the Kickstarter and like, I also knew my value, but I, I did not want to show up for these people without being paid. And it was just the easiest line for me. Like if, if I had been negotiating directly, I would have just been like, we've already established this rate. Like it's this rate or we're not doing it because I also don't care if we don't do it. Like I am very happy to walk away. But my manager was, you know, like new -er to me at that point. And he kind of allowed Jenny to make the argument that it was a half day. So I think they were offering 600 for a half day. I think that they were offering like, well, we only need you for a few hours. Your rate was $1,200 for the full day. So we're going to offer you a half day rate. That's not a thing. Like to be clear, there's no half day rate in SAG. So like SAG has day rates and weekly rates, but there aren't, there's no such thing as a half day rate. Like if you show up for an hour and have one line, you get the day rate. So it was a specious argument to begin with. And I was, you know, upset that my manager had kind of allowed that conversation to happen. But also he had already agreed on his end. Like he had negotiated the 600 up to 800 and was like, great, like I'll take that to Ashley. And so he is the one who kind of forced me into agreeing to that because I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Like I'm not doing it for less than $1,200. But he was clearly embarrassed that he'd misunderstood me and allowed himself to get sucked into this specious argument and basically bullied me into doing it. And uh, so like that sucked and I was mad about it, but I also like, I was sort of mad at the person who was very much supposed to be on my team. Uh, and I just kind of felt like I was stuck in this position where like now I had to do it for an amount that I absolutely would not have agreed to otherwise. And that's like a little bit on me for not maybe putting my foot down more, but also like my manager was, um, <laughs> I'm not working with him anymore either. Let's just say that. And he hadn't been around for the Kickstarter stuff either. So like, I don't think, you know, he understood like how much bad blood there was and also how, how easy it was to say, we already have an established rate for this. I'm not increasing my rate. I'm just saying, that's the rate you established. And now you're going to pay me that because that's the rate. So that, you know, kind of sucked. But like I said, from my emails, it, it does look like I made like 750 for the photo shoot. So, you know, at this point, we still didn't know what the final Kickstarter check would be. As far as I knew, this was like my last chance to squeeze money out of these people. And so I was um, angered that my efforts to do so were thwarted, but it is a little bit more complicated than just them straightforwardly not paying me 1200. I don't know what would have happened if I like actually had a rep who held that line. I assume they would have met it and we would have shot the episodes, but the alternative would have been that those $400 were worth canceling the whole thing over, in which case Really no skin off my nose either way. All the skin stays on my nose. Who's taking skin 
of people's noses. So that's kind of what I meant about it being a mixed bag. I was going back to work with people who had revealed themselves to be uh, even less great to work for than I thought at the end of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, but also I was getting to do the part that I really, really loved. And as long as I was getting to do the part that I really, really loved, it was much easier to overlook the other stuff because I got to act. I got to embody this character that I loved so much and play with a scene partner who I loved working with and know that we were making something that was going to really tickle some fans who missed the show like I missed it. So let's hear from them and take a look at the comments. Madeline, Darcy, what are you doing? Lizzie, I'm answering questions about our relationship, but only if you want to, Darcy. Pulling out PowerPoint thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Jordan, Emmons, I'm so bad at intros. You're just out of practice. Cutest. Yeah, I agree. We played that very adorably. The whole episode is, I mean, like we were trying to make you squee. And I think we did. Kelly Thompson, what I thought was going to go down. Darcy, that one. Lizzie, really? Okay. Are you guys going to get married? Darcy gets down on one knee and looks at Lizzie. I hope so. Uh, that would have, I mean, I get why you wanted that. I'm really glad we didn't do that because this would have been a terrible way to propose. Like what a dumb, dumb proposal. I expect more out of Darcy. Forever floating on air says, this was all fan service, and I loved every second of it. Oh, it's nice that you think that, but it was actually all meant to make you buy a book. <laughs> Lacey Bellamy says, do you still wear the Newsies cap and bow tie? Not often shifty glances. They literally role plays themselves. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, she also thought it was a sex thing. Wondering, Lizzie, I will never be over this show. Never. Yeah, me neither. Ramey Wiles, any relation? Okay, but I need their proposal. I need their wedding. I need their pregnancy announcement. I need baby pictures. Same for Jane and Bing. Need them for science. Apologies to the cast for being unable to fully let this series go. LOL. Well, I did write that movie. <laughs> oh, Bambi Plus, she says, I suddenly remember that the last paragraph in Pride and Prejudice is about how Darcy and Elizabeth favor Mr. and Mrs. Gardner because they met again in Pemberley because of the Gardners. Aww. What a nice parallel. Treya says, I love how they sneakily advertise a secret diary. Ha ha ha. Love you guys so much. Yep. That was the only reason these videos got made. Camille Chandler, who is still here waiting to see them around? It's 2020 now. New decade equals perfect time to reboot this series. Yeah, that'll never happen. Oh, Eugene, you don't realize how much you miss these two until you finally realize that it's over. We may not ever see these two again, but I enjoyed them while they lasted. I will never forget this William Darcy and Lizzie Bennet ever. They will always have a special place in my heart. Oh, I feel like very emotional at that. So I feel like I'm going to end on that because I feel like that's the best possible way for people to feel about the show. How many of you then went and bought the book? Were you influenced? You can just get it from the library. It's okay. So that really was the last time that I ever officially played Lizzie Bennet. But as I mentioned, I did write an entire screenplay called The Lizzie Bennet Wedding, trying very hard to give the fans all the things that they were asking for and the story of why that will never be made and other stories are coming up in epilogue episodes. Next up, we will wrap up the Kickstarter.